Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and this is going to be one of those videos where I'm going to open your eyes. By the end of this video, you should be, if you if you haven't been around too long, and even if you have, you, you might very well be having an aha moment, because I kind of did as I put this video together. These are my favorite videos to make, and they normally make an impression, and I believe this one will. I want to start with this Bond Crypt tweet from November 13th of 2018. And this is something that we've gotten so used to hearing that we, I, I don't think a lot of us have really stopped to think how profound it is that you have this little, this is in 2018 when Ripple was about six years old. You got a six-year-old company where the CEO is saying what we are doing and executing on a day-by-day -day basis is in fact taking over SWIFT. Now, SWIFT is more or less the banking system, at, uh, or has been. So the question is, and this is, this is the reason that I have been able to build an entire YouTube channel around one company and one digital asset, because I can't get over in my mind, I, I've never been able to get past, who are these people? Who, who makes a claim like that? Who says I'm going to take over SWIFT? What startup in your lifetime have you ever even heard say anything bordering on this bold of a claim? Who would have, and here's the bigger question, who would have to be behind a company or a group of people who are running a company in order to make these kind of claims? What kind of a backup? And I don't just mean money people, I mean power people. Who would have to be behind you for you to even think about saying these kind of things and if you're wondering if he really said it, watch this. I'm hesitant to comment on any rumor because if you comment on the false rumors, then you have to comment on the true rumors, and so you just avoid all. Of them. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Well, I think what we're doing and executing on a day-by-day -day basis is, in fact, taking over Swift. In that, you know, we've now signed up, you know, well over 100 banks. Some of the largest Swift-enabled banks in the world are now using Ripple's technology. Uh, I mean, just last week we saw a, a, a remittance company who's using Ripple's technology. They reduced the price per transaction to their consumers from $20 per transaction to $2 per transaction, and they saw an 800% increase in usage overnight. That's the type of dynamic that Swift isn't able to support that we're able to address right now, and that's something we saw just, just in the last couple of weeks. So we certainly want to see banks succeed in this new world order and take advantage of these technologies in the new world order. So we're, not only is he going to replace Swift, the six-year-old startup, not only is he going to replace Swift, but he's going to create a new world order. Ask yourself, when in your life have you ever heard anything even close to that out of anybody running any company that's six years old? And I promise you, you have not. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. Because you know it in your gut. You know this is something different. Now, pay attention because here we go. Now, what have we been seeing? What have we been seeing for the last week? Okay, just look around, watch the news. It says, yes, what about the historic Middle East peace deal signed today? Abraham Accords, brokered by Trump and Jared Kushner, who is Ivanka Trump's husband and Donald Trump's son-in-law. There's Benjamin Netanyahu from Israel, okay? Historic. Now look, for, for you young people who haven't been around, if there's one thing that if you want to change the world, create Middle East Israel peace, okay? This has been, from the time I was a little boy, this has always been, it's always been war after war. There's never peace. No matter what anybody does, there's no peace. And if you think that this is about something other than money, then forget it. Now it is about religion, okay? But it's about the petrodollar. It's about Israel, Middle East, oil, petrodollar, world reserve currency. It's all about that. So, so my point here is that 
Ripple doesn't just come along and make all these bold claims and talk about New World Order. And what, what they're saying when they say New World Order, I'm telling you, it's the replacement of, of that old world order, which is the petrodollar, which is the way the U.S. has had the dollar world reserve currency. They've come to an agreement with all these countries. That's what this is about. You, I'm going to let, look, just keep watching. Here we go. So here's what's going on. It's a peace deal. Look at all the players. Look who's in this picture right here. You'll see there's Jared Kushner, right? Look at Steve. Uh, we ought to call him Sneaky Steve Mnuchin. That, that'd be a nice name for him. There's Ivanka Trump. There's Benjamin, Benjamin Netanyahu, and I'm assuming that's his wife. Okay, this looks like the ultimate thumbnail for this video, which it will be. All right, then you've got this. Look at this. Now, from, from sleepovers to speaking fees, New York Times profile reveals Netanyahu's close ties to the Kushners. Just listen. To, oh, no. I hope that, that I didn't. Let me see if I can refresh this and get access to this because I had access earlier. If not, I'm going to have to stop this and go get the access that I just lost. But anyway, no, I'm not going to stop. Here's what I'm going to tell you is that in what this article is about, it, it, it says Netanyahu's relationship with Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, goes way back. His father featured alongside Adelson and Ron Lauder in a list of potential donors Netanyahu compiled in 2007. Netanyahu literally spent the night at Jared Kushner's house when he was a little boy and slept in Jared Kushner's room, folks. It, it, you look it up. It, it was in this article. I was going to read it to you, but I'm not going to. But if you still just think that that doesn't sound believable, I'll show you something else. You know who's in this picture? That right there. That right there is Netanyahu. And do you know who this is? This is Jared Kushner. Notice how tall this kid is. That is Jared Kushner as a boy. They're playing soccer at Jared Kushner's school. Okay. This soccer ball right here, I think might be symbolic. Okay. And I don't remember if I kept it in here or not. I, hopefully I did. But um, if we see it, we see it. If we don't, I'll remind you. Um, there is a, let me go ahead and say it before I forget. You can look it up. There's a video of Vladimir Putin and he's meeting with Trump and he hands Trump a soccer ball and he's basically saying the ball's in your court. And I, I'm wondering if it was a reference to back to this, this picture right here. Maybe, maybe it's not, but let's move along. So remember this, Jared Kushner knew Benjamin Netanyahu even as a little boy. What does this have to do with anything? Well, have you ever heard of APAC? APAC, our mission, this is an organization between Israel and the United States. The mission of APAC, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, is to strengthen and expand the U.S. Israel relationship in ways that enhance the security of the United States and Israel. We engage with and educate decision makers about the bonds that unite the two countries and how it is in America's best interest to strengthen these bonds and help ensure that the Jewish state remains safe, strong, and secure. All right, this is Trump's APAC speech in 2016. He makes this speech, right? Trump makes this speech, and this speech is basically letting Israel know how this new president stands and how what his, what his position towards Israel is going to be. And if you remember, Obama's position was not very friendly with Israel. Trump comes in and he's like this. My number one priority is to dismantle the disastrous deal with Iran. Thank you, thank you. I have been in business a long time. I know deal making and let me tell you, this deal is catastrophic for America, for Israel, and for the whole of the Middle East. By the way, do you remember when, when Obama flew all that, those U.S. dollars in cash to um, Iran as a part of his deal? How would you get that money back? What if, 
What if all of a sudden there was a digital dollar and people were told to turn their dollars in or those paper dollars become worthless? Might be an easy way to, to get that money back, wouldn't it? The problem here is fundamental. We've rewarded the world's leading state sponsor of terror with $150 billion, and we received absolutely nothing in return. I've studied this issue in great detail, I would say actually greater by far than anybody else. Believe me. Oh, believe me. Okay, I'm not going to play a bunch of that. You can go back and watch the speech. But the point is, is that he made it very clear in the speech that how pro-Israel he was going to be. And, 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 and one thing you're seeing in the news right now over and over and over is he talk, talks about all of the endless wars that we've had, we've had. And a lot of those wars point straight to the relations between Israel and the Middle East and the oil. Okay? It all points that way, folks. This is not my imagination. So here we go. So this is his APAC speech. The APAC speech is extremely important because it sets the tone, sets the tone for those relationships with Israel. Well, guess who wrote the APAC speech or helped write the APAC speech? New York Observer editor Ken Kirsten helped Trump with his APAC speech on on top of reporting Donald Trump's apparent um, knowledge of Fox News' dirty uh, secrets, Gabriel Sherman's excellent piece on Trump campaign contains another bit of media and intrigue. The role of Trump's son-in-law, New York Observer owner Jared Kushner, in the candidate's attempts to connect with the American Jewish community. According to Sherman, the Observer's sitting editor-in-chief, a former Rudy Giuliani speechwriter named Ken Kirsten, helped Kushner write the speech Trump delivered last month at the American-Israeli Public Affairs Committee's annual conference. Yes, that would be the same Ken Kirsten who joined Ripple's board on February 23rd of 2017. And that same, Jer uh, same uh, Ken Kirsten that's buddies with Jared Kushner and worked for him at The Observer. So here you've got this. So after they, after the peace deal we've been seeing on television for the last few days, they, the second they have the peace deal, they start talking about economic benefits. And the blessings of the peace we make today will be enormous. First, because this peace will eventually expand to include other Arab states. And ultimately, it can end the Arab-Israeli conflict once and for all. In the endless wars, and also solve the problem Second, of the world. Because the great currency, economic benefits of our partnership will be felt throughout our region, and they will reach every one of our citizens. And third, because this is not only a peace between leaders, it's a peace between peoples. Israelis, Emiratis, and Bahrainis are already embracing one another. We are eager to invest in a future of partnership, prosperity, and peace. We've already begun to cooperate on combating corona, and I'm sure that together we can find solutions to many of the problems that afflict our region and beyond. So despite the many challenges and hardships that we all face, despite all that, let us pause for a moment to appreciate this remarkable day. All right, so they're, they're, they're talking about how it affects, uh, it's going to affect economics as well. This is from December 19th, 2017, Netanyahu's Bitcoin forecast puts Israel at the center of financial tech revolution. As we go down here, says um, after his comments, um, it says in a video, Netanyahu flanked by a group of aides answered questions put forth by reporters on the subject of digital currency. The reason that you don't sell money is because of the risks. And so you use intermediaries who handle all the risk, such as preventing theft and so forth. And that is the reason they, that they exist, Netanyahu said. Responding to a question of what about whether or not private investment 
in Bitcoin is advisable and the need for such technology. In his comments, the Prime Minister highlighted the role that the banks currently play as financial mediators while underscoring the, that the decentralized technology at the core of digital currencies eliminates the need for formal institutions. Will the banks disappear in the future, a reporter asked. The answer is yes, Netanyahu said confidently. Will it happen tomorrow? Will it happen because of Bitcoin? That is the question. But Bitcoin is certainly pushing in that direction. Asked if the Bitcoin rally will continue, the prime minister asserted, the truth behind what I just said is what's propelling Bitcoin upwards. But he cautioned nothing can keep going up at this rate. It's impossible. Um, his comments, uh, the Bitcoin price was at 17000 then. Israel is an emerging blockchain superpower. Israel has recently been identified as a global leader in the emerging, emerging blockchain and digital currency sphere, with experts in the field acknowledging that the Jewish state's cyber capabilities, security, proficiency, and wealth of entrepreneurial expertise provide an ideal foundation for blockchain technology projects. It is overwhelming to watch startup nation transform into crypto nation. Nimrod May, chief, chief marketing officer of the Swiss-Israeli technology firm Siren Labs, told JNS, this process, I believe, is what's known in evolution as natural selection. Um, let me see if there's anything else interesting in here. Blockchain technologies and the promise behind decentralized services is a profound and game-changing technology. It represents the combination of deep thinking, value creating, and seeing the light regarding the future direction of technology. These are all central to Israeli technology ecosystem, which is why um, we are we are only at the beginning of the tidal rise of companies in Israel, which are harnessing the potential of blockchain, da, 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 da. All right. OK, so let's move along. Wrath of Kahneman tweeted this. This, this was tweeted yesterday. There are some ripple ties amidst Israel's bank Lumi decision to ink an MOU with UAE's FAB and Emirates NBD hours before diplomatic ties were formalized. They intend to offer services such as clearance, credit lines, and foreign currency trade. In 2016, Bank Lumi formed an alliance testing Ripple. 2016, an Emirates NBD trialed Ripple according to Infosys Deck. 2015, UAE FAB formerly NBAD, is a Ripple partner, 2017. So the connections are old, and there is obviously more in play here than remittance, but it will be interesting to see if there's any effect on XRP volume at UAE Exchange, Ripple Partner, or BitOasis. All right, now watch this. Did Trump just end the petrodollar? This is from August 24, 2020. Hey, Trump said something very interesting. He was... By the way, you'll notice... He calls it the X-22 report. Giving his remarks on the Iranian attack. And he said that we are no longer dependent on the Middle East oil. Just take a listen to what he said. These are accomplishments that nobody thought were possible. And options in the Middle East became available. We are now the number one producer of oil and natural gas anywhere in the world. We are independent, and we do not need Middle East oil. Now, did you hear what he said? That the deep state, the mainstream media, the globalists, they thought it was impossible to become energy independent, to separate the United States from the dependency on the Middle Eastern oil. Once we separated ourselves from the Middle Eastern oil, it gave Trump and the patriots other opportunities they weren't dependent on what the central bank system now this is very important because once we sever that tie which trump has just confirmed we no longer need the petrodollar system so think about what trump and the patriots have done up to this point they're reworking all the globalist trade deals removing the regulations, cutting taxes, and becoming energy independent so we're no longer dependent on the Middle East, which supports the petrodollar system, which supports the Federal Reserve System, the central bank, which supports other central banks around the world. Now, remember, the only reason we needed the Saudis 
is we were, we were from what Nixon did is we were protecting the Saudis. The deal was we were protecting the Saudis in return for, for them making everyone buy their oil in U.S. dollars. So if, the, if, if we no longer need to protect the Saudis, they may want to work with us on, on a new order, a new world order, right? Watch this video from, I think it's around the, um, let me see if I can get, I think it's right. Let me see if I can get to the place where I was. About right here. The, the global U.S. dollar standard is supported by the petrodollar. It doesn't say petrodollar here, but the you really should read this story. We'll put a link here at the bottom. The untold story behind Saudi Arabia's 41-year U.S. debt secret. Now, this was a top secret deal that was made by the U.S. Treasury Secretary William Simon during the Nixon administration when Nixon ended the gold backing of the U.S. dollar in August of 1971, this deal sort of took its place. And in 2016, you know, this, is, this was kept a secret from 1972 to 2016 that there was this petrodollar. And this was an agreement, and, and Bloomberg got it released in 2016 through the Freedom of Information Act. And what it disclosed is that there was this secret deal made uh, where Saudi Arabia, we would buy oil from Saudi Arabia. We printed those dollars to buy the oil. They, take the, they sell us the oil and they take the profits from that and they would reinvest them in U.S. Treasuries. And this disclosed how big their U.S. Treasury holdings were for the very first time. This is Saudi Arabia and these are the other countries but what it would do is lump all oil exporters together and report their treasury holdings so it would keep the Saudi Arabian deal secret. Uh, so this is coming to an end with the uh, yuan-based oil contracts. And now at the same time, there's countries around the world proposing gold-backed currencies. This is the Malaysian prime minister proposing a regional currency that's uh, based on gold, Special replacing currency. the U.S. dollar for trade there. And now the Russian central bank is considering a gold-backed cryptocurrency. Now remember, um, what I think they're going to do is there's going to be a lot of central bank-backed uh, digital currencies, and XRP is going to be the bridge. But do you remember that lady right there? Remember when Brad Garlinghouse was, was in the the room with all the central bankers in Switzerland. She was one of the ones sitting at the table there. It was her. It was the guy from the BIS. It was Christine Lagarde from the IMF. There's only one, there's only one reason that Brad Garlinghouse would so comfortably walk around talking about replacing Swift and creating a new world order. And that is if the, if these level people are in on it, Folks, that's the reason I've been so fascinated by this company for all this time is because this is not my imagination. These things are not popping into my mind out of nowhere. It's all tied together. It's so obvious. You, 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 you have to stick your head in the sand and not notice it after a while. So strap in because the impact from this is going to be huge. You know, in the first, uh, in the three transitions to different global monetary systems that took place in the last century, the impact was only felt by the world's central banks, big international companies, and international banks. This one is going to be felt by everyone. You know, the last times it didn't affect the common man. This one is going to affect everybody. So it's time to uh, figure out what, how this is going to affect you and to prepare for it and how it's going to affect me is I own XRP. That's how it's going to affect me. <laughs> it could affect you the same way. <laughs> All right. Um, I saw this, um, and, and but but I, I think that, that what I've just laid out for you is pretty in your face. What in the world? You know, I can't tell you how many times over the last three years I've looked at all this information and been like, is this really what I think it is? There's not a question in my mind. It is what I think it is at this point. So now at this point, it's, it's just a matter of when all of this stuff goes live and when everybody's in place. Um, 
this I thought was a great uh, a great tweet. Weimar alert. He's referring to the Weimar Republic when when they had hyperinflation. New release out. The foreign sector bought forty eight billion dollars of tr- U.S. Treasuries in July. The U.S. ran two point eight trillion dollars in deficits through July of this fiscal year, and the foreign sector bought one hundred sixty four billion dollars during that time frame, or only sixty six percent. Sorry, six percent of the deficit. Um, so you can see what that disaster is. All right. Riz XRP, this goes right into that. He sent me this. Are U.S. Treasury bonds still safe to invest in? Very much so. I think there's a... This is not an issue of credit rating. The United States can pay any debt it has because we can always print money to do that. So there is zero probability of default. What... are U.S. Treasury bonds still so they safe? They can just print money. That's that's a that's a hell of a thought pattern, isn't it? <laughs> okay, Anders L. hit it hit it right here. We see the change occurring in front of our eyes. Migration to ISO two two hundred twenty two for banks. Crypto regulations being implemented. Banks allowed to hold digital assets. Crypto exchange is now a bank. Um, Jonathan D. sent me this. Uh, Michelle Bond, looking forward to security, so currency and digital chambers upcoming digital asset webinar featuring Comptroller Brooks and Chairman Jay Clayton speaking about innovative regulation. Well, you, you, it makes you wonder, what is Jay Clayton going to say? Could this be the moment that we find out what XRP's classification is? You better, you might want to put that one on your calendar, folks, October the 1st. Um, and then we have Michelle Vandenberg sent me this from Tyler Winklevoss. Wow. The Bank of England discussing negative interest rates. If they adopt this, they would, they would be paying you to borrow. You couldn't buy a better advertisement for Bitcoin, but you can take their money and go long Bitcoin or XRP. Hey, now they wrapped up the, the link to, uh, people wrapped up their, their, uh, two day investor conference yesterday. I was in it last night. Um, they wrapped it up and they immediately put on the platform SoFi, which I told you about this morning, and it has already sold out. So what I wanted to make sure I stress to all of you, if you haven't done it yet, that you can register uh, for link to it's free. OK, you go you can either go to their website and you can register. That's at link to L-I-N-Q-T-O dot com. This is all in the description of this video. OK, you can go in and register now, here's why you need to, because in the conference, one thing that I did that I heard them say in the conference is they're about to come out with several new issues. And some of these are probably going to be names that we've been hearing about on this channel and talking about for a long time now. And so you, you can either go and, and you can um, register for free on their website or you can go. I've, I've included the links to the Apple Store and the Google Play Store where you can go and download the app and sign up for your account. It's free to do. Don't wait until they come out with these new issues because what's going to happen is what happened today with SoFi. And SoFi is not as big of a name brand as some of them that they could put on that platform. If they just imagine if they put something um, like a name brand crypto exchange or something like that on this platform. If you're not set up and ready to go, you're, you're out of luck because somebody's going to swoop in and get those, those, um, SPVs ahead of you. So this is the Apple store where you can download the app and this is the Google Play store where you can do the same thing. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. Go download the link to app before it's too late and they come out with an issue that you just can't get your hands on. Thanks for listening. Every day, billions of people around the world are mocked, ridiculed, laughed at and embarrassed by their friends, family and even strangers. These people go through their days knowing there are secrets being kept from them. They hear the faint whispers behind closed doors. The information and knowledge is held very close and only shared with others who were fortunate enough to find out. Feeling lost, rejected and ostracized, these people give up, never finding out what digital assets the digital asset investor holds. But there is hope. 
Join the free Digital Asset Investor email newsletter and find out what digital assets he owns each month, including investments he's considering. Click the link in the description of this video or go to digitalassetinvestornewsletter.com. Put an end to your days of gloom and depression. Join the greatest free digital asset email newsletter ever created.